Hello, Ellen. Welcome to Potter Wash. Hi, Holly. Can you tell the students who you are? Sure. I'm uh, Ellen Anderson. I am an associate professor of political science and also of gender, sexuality, and women's studies. And what question have you brought to us today, Ellen? Well, it's it's a question near and dear to my heart because it's about government in Harry Potter. And, and, and so the question that I'm bringing is, what kind of a government do wizards have? And what does this say about wizard society? I mean, I, I can I can I, I can add on to that in to say, um, um, like, is is there anything about the government in Harry Potter that that we as muggles should find um, useful, laudable, um, um, something that that we might say uh, normatively is is a, is a is a good system that produces democratic outcomes. All right. Wow. So what is your what is your answer? Uh, Harry Potter's government sucks. <laughs> oh, you really, think, really you say I mean, so so you gotta you gotta you gotta be willing to go dive into these books a little bit and think a little bit about sort of what you can pull from four and five and stick together. But as near as I have figured out, as I have sort of contemplated this, you have the Ministry of Magic. Everybody knows that. The Ministry of Magic appears to be run by a minister of magic. Apparently, there's only one minister. So, so the minister is, um, and throughout the book, we only see male ministers, although apparently uh, in some of the, like the Pottermore writings and things around it, there's, there's indications that there have been female ministers. But I'm going to go ahead and use a, a male pronoun for talking about this because we have several ministers that sort of float and are out. So there's only one minister, which is just sort of weird. Like one would expect there to be multiple ministers <laughs> in a ministry and maybe a chief minister or say a prime minister if you're if you're sitting in England. But so there is a minister of magic. And we know about that. There is clearly a lot of bureaucracy. So we know that there's um, uh, the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, the Department of Magical Accidents and Catastrophes, the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures. There's something about um, uh, a department that's about uh, under, underage magic. There's magical so games and sports. The, the prime job opportunity for a, a, a student out of Hogwarts is to be employed by the ministry. Yes, right. And so there's a lot of bureaucracy. Now, I, you know, as a political scientist, I'm 100% a fan of bureaucracy, right? Which is to say, bureaucracies are the administrators of law, right? So when you have your lawmaking body, hold on to that thought for a second, you have a lawmaking body and it passes some kind of law, then somebody actually has to take this text on a page or orally, whatever, and translate it to make it functional. So bureaucrats, they are administering law or enforcing law. So cops are street level bureaucrats. So is the FBI. Um, they, are, um, they are writing regulations designed to operationalize stuff. And they are doing sort of policy and program review. Right. And all of those features are actually really good features. Now, we can talk about stuff being too rule bound. We can all have conversations about sort of bureaucracies run amok. But the, but the scope of like a part of your government is designed to make sure that the stuff that is passed by some legislative body um, sort of like takes root. And and grows or a different metaphor is like is anchored into something, right? So if you pass a law that says, um, as we did a few years ago here in Burlington, that the speed limit throughout the city was going to be 25 miles an hour, okay, city council went off and did that, but like somebody's got to like get the like get the new signs, 
and arrange for the new signs to get put up. Like all of this is like, it sounds boring, but it's really important to mm -hmm. making government work. So we are filled with bureaucracy. And apparently there's a lot of law, but I can't figure out who makes the law. <laughs> there is no legislative body. There is. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to screw this up because I only remember it from the, the books. I, I, I know we saw it in in um, uh, movies four and five, but there's the um, Wisengamot. I have no idea how you actually say that. So I I'm just going to. But I don't have any. Wisengamot? Sure. Or, that's right either. That's just what I said. Listen, you know, say it with some authority and I'll follow you on this. Wisengamot. OK, so we know that exists. And it is apparently a judicial body. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that it has a, a bunch of members of it who look like they act as a jury. And in Harry's disciplinary hearing, they're definitely there as a jury. Mm -hmm. So we have we have a minister. We have a lot of bureaucracy. And I think we have a judiciary mm -hmm. of some sort, although um, for a while, for, for quite a while, um, how did you say that word again? I said Wizengamot. Wizengamot. Okay. For, for quite some time, Dumbledore is the chief warlock mm -hmm. of the Wizengamot. Mind you, while he's being the headmaster. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Are we okay? Yep, carry on. So mind you, he's got a full-time job. And he's got this other, it would, it sounds like it's a big job. Right? But when he is removed, again, by some kind of opaque process, the minister steps in. So now you have a minister, a invisible lawmaking body. You have a judiciary, which has some features that should feel pretty similar, right? So there is, um, like there's a prosecutor. Uh, the, the way this, um, the way that the, um, the, the judges slash jury interrogate themselves, that's not an American standard, but there are certainly plenty of courts that are sort of informational that way, and they're not adversarial. The idea is if we just cover enough information, we'll figure out the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's some judging going there, although I have a whole bunch of things to say about the judging. Um, let's let's go back to our, our our first minister. So our first minister apparently can just step in and be like the chief judge. Suggested um, that the Weizen gamut. How'd I do? Oh, cool. Yeah. Again, we made this up. All right. Um, might be like the House of Lords. So that and the House of Lords is simultaneously a legislative body and a judicial body. Except that like it's judicial body stuff, it only gets the really big cases. Right. Almost all judicial disputes are decided well below showing up at the House of Lords. And that's true of our Supreme Court, too. So. All right. And, and uh, Mr. Weasley does seem very surprised that Harry was tried in front of the Wizard Gamma. That seems yep. to be an unusual move. So it, maybe they do normally get the big ones. Well, and it, it is the case that like Harry thinks he's going to be heard by one member of the Wizard Gamma. Sorry, I can't do it. We'll just good. Just forge ahead. Um, right. So it seems like maybe by one judgy type person. Mm -hmm. Um, but the we never see or hear them talking about making laws at all. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, the one time we we know we know two things about laws. We know that Dolores Umbridge 
is the author of the essentially the 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 let's discriminate against werewolves law mm -hmm. and we know that arthur weasley wrote the misuse of muggle artifacts law mm -hmm. right and it's it's this kind of jokey sort of thing because he makes sure that he can still magic up his favorite muggle car mm -hmm. like he writes a loophole in so bureaucrats don't usually write laws they operationalize laws but they don't write laws mm -hmm. so i have no idea where these laws are coming from but i'm really certain that the that the minister does not have any real constraints on his power that he is in fact an authoritarian despot while well, he's ruling and maybe maybe you get the kind of benevolent dictator like everybody wants Dumbledore at some point to be the minister and, and I think the assumption is he would be benevolent but he's a freaking dictator so that you get things like the first minister is putting pressure on the press well so much for any sort of free speech guarantee right that's not happening um and there's stuff that's normal right the notion that um the minister covers up the mass breakout from azkaban like yeah governments cover up stuff that embarrasses them like that's that's normal the fact that the minister himself is involved in the attempt to arrest dumbledore Mm -hmm. what all right um later on when fudge is long since gone and now we've got scrimgar right he is just fixated on the contents of dumbledore's will right and apparently he's allowed to hold on to the contents of the will for 30 days so we have the minister of an entire nation <laughs> of wizards who also does will administration? <laughs> I mean, this makes no sense, right? He also leads arrests, right? He's there in the attempt to arrest Dumbledore, mm -hmm. right? This, he has the power to make Dolores Umbridge the new Defense Against Dark Arts instructor, which I guess means that Hogwarts is a state school. Apparently. And then, I mean, the decrees get increasingly bizarre from there. Well, right, because then she gets to be on a high, because that's the kind of thing you normally see in democracies, right? <laughs> Just and a then, quick squad made up of children. Right. And, and then she becomes like the headmistress, right? So this, so this chief minister, this only minister, like, I see no constraints on his power. He is worried about public opinion very worried that's amazing and so and so that suggests that he's elected mm -hmm. and can sort of be deposed so okay so there are elections we don't see any of them we see several new ministers but we don't see any election and okay like maybe maybe you know rowling just didn't want to write about elections fair but she's writing a lot about government mm -hmm. But we do know, and we know this early because it's something that um, Hagrid says early on, um, uh, which is there are at least times when instead of selecting a minister through election, like they just name one. Right. And that's why they want Dumbledore. Who's they? That's my exact question. Like, who is the they who chooses this? Mm -hmm. Right. So. Oh, well, and we know that, that Barty Crouch Sr. was sort of like on track to become minister until his, this thing happened with his son. And then it sort of passed on to Fudge. But again, who makes those decisions? Who makes those decisions? Right. If we're thinking about. Limited government. Right. And so part of the core idea of democracy, the way we talk about it now, is popular sovereignty, um, majority rule with protection of fundamental minority rights. 
And that's the modern definition. All right, so that governments are limited in important ways that are necessary to ensure liberty. So let's think about what kind of rights people have. Clearly, there's no right to a free press. Um, there's obviously no right to a fair trial. I mean, the dementors are in the freaking courtroom sucking the joy out of everyone. Hagrid is sent to Azkaban as a precaution in book two. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, we'll let you out with an apology if we catch whoever opened the Chamber of Secrets. Sirius is sent to Azkaban without a trial, mm -hmm. right? Where everyone is tortured. Right, no matter what. Apparently, there's only one prison. Mm -hmm. We see people that sit there for um, like a six-month sentence. Yeah, but we right? also know that they go insane within a month. Right. So, so, so the only apparently sort of sort of the uh, the only penalty for crime for criming appears to be torture and insanity. Mm -hmm. All right. But when um. When Sirius escapes, so one of the interesting things about book three, like Sirius escapes, Fudge is like crazy upset. He unilaterally gives the Dementors permission to do the kiss of death. Right. So he's just unilaterally changed this dude's sentence without any kind of judiciary intervening. I mean, we are looking at dictatorship. The functionally, I mean, again, apparently this this dictator cares about um, uh, popular opinion. Public, popular opinion. I'm not entirely certain why, although it's certainly the case. Like Fudge just gets he gets fired by whom? Like if you're having an election, like. I, I, like, did the, you know, did, was there some sort of impeachment process? I mean, I have no idea. Like, he's just sort of fired. And then, like, we get these, these like, these, these string of, like, other ministers that come in, right? So when I think about the, the fact of that there might be limits on this government and that people might have rights, right? I don't really see any of that happening, um, but I do see a government that is very, very interested in um, in engaging in um, a, a certain kind of wizard supremacy, right? And it's not just the bad guys who are engaged in wizard supremacy. Right. So you can think about the the what was it, that act of uh, the Muggle born registration mm -hmm. act. I mean, by this point, we're supposed to think this government is awful. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, that's part of the point. She's making an argument in this book about sort of the fallibility of government and how you can't trust it. It's a very libertarian argument. Uh, but way before that. Giants. Centaurs, freaking house elves, right? It's a little slavery mm -hmm. among friends. Um, giant centaurs, well, muggles, muggleborns, werewolves, uh, squid, squids, mm -hmm. right? There are just there are all of these, these, um sort of legally inferior mm -hmm. people and species. And you might argue that squibs are not, they're not by law prevented from doing anything. So maybe squibs, maybe I shouldn't put squibs in there. Like squibs apparently just largely go end up living with muggles. I don't think they would be all not accepted at Hogwarts, which is what you said is a state school. They don't have enough magic to go to school. Yeah. And well, that's yes. true. Well, fair enough. That is, and I missed that. So that is a really good point. I'm sorry, you can't get this education. <laughs> Which seems like a pretty fundamental way to exclude them from society thereafter. Yeah, right. So there is, there is, there is nothing about this government 
that I think we should ever have thought was valuable. So like, so we know, so the government is apparently set up to just keep magic invisible from the muggles. That actually seems like a perfectly reasonable way. Um, although I would think that the primary purpose of your government would be to govern your own people. And that part of the principle of that might be for our safety, we have to remain invisible to the muggles and perhaps for their safety as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so I can buy that as a really important premise of why government exists. Like there's a foundational premise for why government has to exist here, which is um, you've got to keep a secret from the muggles. And if we just let sort of wizards and whatnot go off and do their whole thing, they'll blow this, they'll blow this in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll buy that. You know, they, here's a here's a here's a reason. Uh, but they're not. There's a little bit of keeping it invisible from muggles that we see from this government, but that doesn't seem to be the mainstay of their existence at all, right? So, I mean, this can't functionally be a democracy. It's just not. No. There's no popular sovereignty. Not if people get assuming that there are elections. I mean, not if people get to, like, vote for the minister, but only when there aren't important things going on. When there's a really important thing going on, we will just install mm -hmm. a minister, right? There's not, like, decisions that are being made are not being made courtesy of the people in any way, shape, or form that we can tell. I mean, this really is bureaucrats gone wild. The bureaucrats are just writing laws. So I have, a question. I have a question for you. Uh, we talked last a little bit about the ways that the aesthetic of the wizarding world and also the economic system of the wizarding world suggest a pre-industrial revolution kind of era. Would you say that that's in keeping with the government as well? Well, were that the case, I would actually be expecting it to be a monarchy of sorts. We know it's not a monarchy, so ergo it's a republic. Because, like, in one way of thinking about things, like, a republic just means not a monarchy. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's a it's a republic. So pre-industrial revolution, we don't, like, there are not a whole heck of a lot of republics out there. There is sort of functionally the United States and France mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in the part of the world that we would call sort of the industrialized democracy part of the world that like the people who are probably the most were envisioned as the readers of this book. Mm. And, and so in a, in a pre-industrial era government, you don't actually have to do a lot of governing. You have to be able to repel invaders. You have to be able to tax enough. Oh, we have no idea how taxation works. You have to be able to tax enough so that you have income. Um, seen as promoting some sort of basic justice, although many a ruler has not done that and gone just fine. But one of the reasons that, that um, criminal penalties tended to be so harsh um, in pre-industrial era societies is because it was really hard to catch people who are committing crimes. And so you had to make a spectacle out of those folks. So maybe you could argue that Azkaban is a spectacle, but it's not really. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's not like we get to watch. It's not like we get to have this like TV insert into people being miserable in Azkaban. Um, so and there's bureaucracy out the wazoo. Right. That's not pre-industrial government. Right? Bureaucrats show up to do stuff because government is lawmaking. It's policy making. And somebody's got to figure out how to how to ensure that the laws are being followed. Right how to operationalize the laws. Like, so there's tons of bureaucracy 
right? Which is completely counter to any sort of pre-industrial. Could we see the bureaucracy as a form of the minister who's in power wants to keep on the good side of the people by employing as many of their relatives as possible in some sort of um, favor system? Sure, but then I really want to know where the money's coming from. Right, yeah. Right, because if you're deliberately employing people, how are you paying them with what? I mean, we know that the Weasleys are not very well off, mm -hmm. right? Which so is they're important classes to how the text actually kind of hedges on that. They do a lot of telling us that they're poor, but they show us a mostly middle class family. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the middle class family, but it is middle class family where, um, you know, Christmas gifts, Christmas gifts um, are they're made with more love than with style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely evidence on both sides, but uh, we've sort of talked about the ways that this is it's necessary for them to be poor for the narrative more so than right. actually reality would suggest. And so there's these, these very heavy handed reminders that they are poor. Like Ron's uh, crappy robes, mm -hmm. right? And that Ron has to have scabbers, mm -hmm. right? Or is other um, people have pets who are not Death Eaters? Yes, other people have pets who are not Death Eaters. Um, so, I mean, it, 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 from my vaunted status as a political scientist, like this government it makes no sense. It, it doesn't make sense in terms of fitting into any sort of pre-industrial space um it, it it reads like it's like a fascist government because you know where there's a lot of bureaucracy in fascist governments um we know that there are no apparent limits on the power of the minister, although the minister fears being removed. Now, we've never seen a minister actually voted out, but we have definitely seen ministers be deposed, mm -hmm. right? So that's a marker of sort of authoritarian systems where one of the great fears is sort of being deposed from your position and and maybe this is maybe this is all um i don't know a a a a a plug for libertarianism or anarchism uh but fundamentally like this is like the only thing good that you can say about this government is that it does eventually sort of fight against the Death Eaters, right, who are ex explicitly eugenic. I mean, they're also Death Eaters, but they're explicitly eugenic. So so this so the Ministry of Magic is is, in fact, you know, fighting against eugenic principles. So I will give them that. Well, that's a very low bar. Right. But beyond that, I don't see that there is any evidence that this government is good or or that it strives to be good or that it strives to promote goodness in any in any manner that muggles like us um, would recognize. I mean, we certainly have plenty of evidence of incompetence, but we just also have evil, right? This is an evil government. It throws people in jail without trial. It tortures them. It tortures school children for getting answers wrong. Yet yeah, Harry and Hermione want to eventually be part of this government. Mm -hmm. Which is very interesting as they are our model raised students. Right. And they should be the ones who more than anything, well, particularly Hermione, because like she was clearly so widely read and thought about things a lot and is the smartest witch of her age. Right. You think she would look at that government and be like, yeah, that's 
there's something highly wrong about this. I mean, she's the one who's like, okay, that house elf thing, that's slavery, and that's not that's a no go. Mm -hmm. We do not like slavery here, right? And right, all of these people that we're supposed to like are all like. They're not enslaved. They like doing all this horrible They're work. They're rehearsing all of these sort of 19th century, 18th century slavers. They treat them so well. They really enjoy their work. They were built for this. Holy wow. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a rare children's book that takes the, uh, takes the stance that slavery might be okay. Well, of course, we're not supposed to think that it's okay. We're supposed to love Dobby, and we do love Dobby, right? Um, but this notion of that Dobby is brave, like Dobby is like Harriet Tubman-esque, you know, Frederick Douglass-esque, willing to fight their way out to freedom, um, and is, you know, in some ways of a voice before their their time or fighting to have a voice. And of course, the Dobby gets killed. Um, so we don't know what would have happened had Dobby been able to to stay and, and grow. But I mean, I think it's it's it's, you know, I think we're meant to to look at this as a seedy underbelly that we spent three books not knowing about. Mm -hmm. Right. She is. Government is not peripheral to this series by the by the time you get to book four it's really central i mean book three maybe could have been a like a throwaway like oh we have prisoner of azkaban blah 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 and then we never see it again okay that maybe could have could have been but like she is centrally taking aim she's building a a, a, a particular kind of government to take pot shots at it mm -hmm. And yes, Harry and Hermione envision working for the government because apparently it's just about the only job you can have. You can be a shopkeeper, right? You can work for a government school, which is working for the government. Work for the banks. Yes, you could be a goblin and work for the banks. I forgot goblins in my oh, yes. list of... Well, like Bill Weasley works for the banks. So they've, got, they've got a couple oh, of... Things, uh, but I and those are not state owned i don't think but um yeah there's very limited um very limited job opportunities if you're not working for the ministry yeah right and that's all we know about mm -hmm. really like we only see a few jobs and by the way like the teachers at hogwarts are, are horrible right so the quality control over teaching well, like I'm thinking about Umbridge with the actual torture because this is an actual government functionary. But if this, these are state schools, and I guess they have to be, or there is no private property that the government is bound to respect, although that makes the whole will thing weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, right. So maybe it's easy just to go, well, I guess they are state schools. Um, so would you, would you say that this government is bad or incoherent? Which Which would you... Or, I mean, it can be both, but which would you say it falls more under? Well, I mean, it's incoherent in that we never know who's making the laws. Mm -hmm. Like, there seems to be this really important piece uh, that's missing. And we don't make any, any, any money. And we don't know, right. Um, but it's also, it's also malign, right? Like, the wizarding world sort of sucks in terms of what they're willing like what they think is normal behavior like it's normal to look down our noses at giants right and to, oh my gosh Hagrid is part giant right yeah right we're all magical creatures and that's awesome unless you're a werewolf Right. And I'm thinking werewolfism that has to be the easiest thing possible to deal with. You're talking what, maybe three nights out of the year if there's the full moon and you're taking the almost full moons to either side. Right. You can't have just a lovely little space that all the werewolves check into. 
to hang out and run with their werewolf buddies. Oh, that sounds actually quite nice. And then they, and then when they're done, they go back. Right? Like werewolves is easy. Like if you think about werewolf as a disability, that one's easy. Ripen right, now can't can't possibly do that because werewolves is scary. Um, they are um, their law enforcement. This is kind of pre-industrial, I suppose. Their law enforcement is like raggedy. Like you see, some people really get busted. So I mean, this has got some kind of accuracy to it, I suppose. Right, which is to say rich, wealthy people or presumptively wealthy people, if we can think of the Malfoys as, as being the marker of sort of upper classness, um, they get away with all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Right. But Harry gets picked on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's it's very hit or miss, even amongst the, you know, not elite, uh, yeah. which I guess sort of goes back to what you were saying. There's big consequences, but we're only going to get you once in a while. So, I mean, even when we talk about the underage magic, how how they can't even seem to figure out whether underage people are doing underage magic. And so they're, can, they can't tell the difference between a house elf and a child, which means that they're... And there's a whole bureaucracy dedicated to it. Inconsistently enforcing all of their laws. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, this is no government that, that any, any small-D Democrat um, should have any respect for at all. This is a government that should be wiped off the map and rebuilt. And the fact is, when there is massive external threat of a, say, Voldemort sort, right, governments do tamp down on civil liberties. They do it all the time. Um in the name of security, in the name of the need to produce whatever you need to produce, the bullets, the guns, the tanks, right? So there is, like, even governments that we might call good governments, sort of noble governments, governments that are trying to do the right thing, although they're filled with people with all of their frailties and their self-interest and all that jazz, Mm -hmm. um, you could at least say, but this idea has value, this principle has value there's there's nothing there except possibly the foundational basis of we need to keep ourselves safe from the muggles and keep the muggles safe from us mm-hmm. is the only valuable thread that i can find so that any new government and hermione should lead the rebellion obviously because you know she's got 14 ideas about how you could make government better and they would all be right Mm-hmm. Well, she studied the history, and she's the brightest witch of her age. Right. Um, and she's seen how governments work. Right. And unlike, you know, 10-year-old Harry, who probably wasn't paying attention very much to government, and then when he, he was home when he was 11 and 12 and 13, like in the summers, uh, it, it doesn't strike me that the Dursleys were very into to talking about politics a whole bunch in any sort of meaningful way, right? I would imagine um, that the Grangers, like they probably have these conversations. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so home, the, the Dursleys are set up to be quite um, reactionary, sort of. Mm-hmm. And so Harry may be coming in with some ideas that are maybe a bit more favorable toward that kind of government. Well, could be, but it, but it also could be that that he simply never contemplated this at all. And I mean, I think the book wants us to think that, yeah. right? Because the books, there is a, a, I doubt that J.K. Rowling read about this, although maybe I'm wrong, right? But there is, a, in the political socialization literature, where socialization is how do we come to have the values that we have about government and politics. That's why it's political socialization, right? Most children start with a kind of simplistic government as mommy, daddy sort of way. And they tend to focus on a really visible person. So like in America, it's commonly the president or maybe the mayor of the town. Like, so they personify. 
And the assumption is that these high authority figures are probably right and good. So in the first couple of books, right, Dumbledore is clearly playing that like he is the good all wise father and we can tell because like folks try to keep trying to get him to run the government <laughs> and he's not going to do that he just wants to run his school right so he's not tempted by power right and then as the books go on we dig deeper and deeper and and the notion of of dumbledore is being fundamentally good is called into question at the end but 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 government right government starts just by being like the teachers at hogwarts um and there are some mean teachers and there are some kind of nice teachers and then there is you know the headmaster and the headmaster is clearly both good and generous um and 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 lays down the laws mm -hmm. right and then as the books go on like what government really is gets more and more complicated and it starts with things like dementors mm -hmm. or killing buckbeak oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna listen to your appeal but i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring the uh, executioner with me yeah i'm feeling really fairly certain that i'm and it's fudge Mm -hmm. The minister of the whole damn wiggle, us wiggle, the whole damn wizard country. He's everywhere. Is is going to oversee the sentencing of Buckbeak, right? And in that way, it's incoherent, mm -hmm. right? I think at that point we're meant to read Dumbledore is good and fudge as not he's incompetent but he's also grasping and greedy mm -hmm. he's focused on public opinion not doing the right thing right. right and so if that's our original view then it just keeps getting more and more complicated by book four we have wizards from other state schools i presume in other wizard nations Right. Um, as somebody who is Norwegian, it's lovely to hear that like Norway gets a shout out. Mm -hmm. um, right. So so the world of possible wizard government gets a lot bigger. Right. Plus, there's like the like the, the wizarding tournaments, like the big sports, the yeah. Olympics, if you will, <laughs> of of the wizarding world. Right. So we are seeing government get bigger and bigger and bigger and then by the time we get to book four we're noticing that there are all of these levels in the ministry of magic right and like if you want to actually get to the courtroom you have to go down 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 right into the bowels right that's meant to indicate that it's a kind of star chamber yeah yeah right that there isn't really justice here everybody's surprised when dumbledore stands up to speak for Harry as though that's not normally a thing that happens so that you have this star chamber and you have a dementor by your side and you have an inquisitor um but you don't have an advocate mm -hmm. you can have an advocate when Dumbledore says he wants to come in they let him come in but there's no sense of there's some lawyer at your side like where are all the lawyers it's true. They have enough bureaucrats. They ought to have lawyers. There ought to be lawyers all over the place. Yeah, it's a very anti-government set of books. Yeah. All right, Alan. I think we need to need to end it there. <laughs>